Instagram. All right, hey, Bulk community. Uh, thanks, hey, for, thanks for joining us today, guys, for our first ever Bulk Breakdown. Uh, this will be a monthly chat where we talk to you guys about sharing brand updates, industry trends, um, and just answering some of your questions that you might have about Bulk or what's going on in the community. So today I will be I'm joined by my new co-host, Courtney. She is a new Bulk team member and she'll be assisting me with these videos. Yeah, thank you so much for the intro, Colleen. Mm -hmm. Hey, Bulk community, super excited to be here. Um, I'm Courtney, I'm new to the Bulk team, um, and really excited that we're gonna start doing these monthly videos. So as Colleen and I are talking, feel free to post any kinds of questions about reselling or Bulk or anything that pops into your head in the comments for Instagram, that's gonna be below us, and then on Facebook, it's going to be over to the side. Um, and toward the end of the video, Colleen and I will pick a couple questions um, that we want to answer live. Yeah. Um, and of course, don't forget to like this video and share it so you can get other members of the reseller community involved. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much, Courtney. Like, so let, we're just going to jump in and get started. Um, so first thing that we want to talk about this month is a craze that's been, you know, wildly popular right now from Netflix is the art of organization with Marie Kondo. Um, if you have not heard, it's a new Netflix series based on her best-selling book of the same name, um, The Art of Organization, with Marie Kondo. Mm -hmm. And so, for you, those of you guys who are unfamiliar, Kondo is a organization's consultant. She helps people take uh, things in their lives that are not sparking joy so that they can create uh, just basically a more organized space and help them with their daily lives and what everything you know, that entails. <laughs> um, so if you're a reseller, some, if you guys are a reseller and you haven't, get, haven't gotten started in selling apparel yet, right now is the time to do it. Um, with the craze of Marie's new series is that people are taking items from their home and they're taking things that don't spark joy and they're just donating them. So what that means is right now that Goodwills and uh, thrift stores are being flooded with great apparel items for you guys to source and sell. Um, yeah, so you guys can go to those stores, thrift them, flip them, and start making a profit from them. Yeah, it's a really great trend. I mean, I know last weekend I semi condoed my own house, um, and I had no idea how much stuff I just had lying around. Um, and it's amazing because, yeah, as Colleen was saying, it's so great for thrift stores. Um, if you source from there, if you source from even flea markets, mm -hmm. um, it's a really great option because there's so much good stuff there now. But the really cool thing too is that you can also take some of Kondo's organizing techniques and use them to organize your own inventory, right Colleen? Yeah, so she offers a lot of different aspects to her organization steps, but one thing that you can take away as a reseller that's not just from sourcing the inventory at these Goodwills, is that actually using those organization skills to tackle your workspace or even your death pile. So the way Marie breaks it down is that she separates your organization into different categories, so it's not such an overwhelming task to think about at one time. Um, the way that she organizes it is by clothes, books, paper items, and then kimono. Kimono meeting kind of just everything else that you have. Um, and while you don't have to necessarily use those exact same you know, categories of where to start, you can start apply those same theories to your organization tactics. So if you have clothes that you want to start apparel, you just start there with the clothes. If you have toys and games, if you have bath and beauty products, you want to start in a specific area so the whole project itself is not overwhelming. Um, another tip she, has, she really offers that's a great one is she offers a specific folding technique for her clothes, which is, again, going to be great if you have that dreaded death pile that you should take care of. Hashtag death to the death pile. <laughs> if you guys are not on that challenge, it's a regular challenge going on with posh markers, and it can honestly be applied to any time of, in your reselling journey. Um, but we can get a little bit more into that later. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it's, it's such an awesome method. I know I had so much more room with mm -hmm. all of my stuff and I actually started folding the way that she folds. You yeah. can actually see everything that you have, which is crazy. Yeah, so a huge benefit of that folding technique, and we're not gonna get into a specific example of how to fold it because you guys can just go on YouTube, you can type in Marie Kondo folding technique and there will be literally thousands of videos showing you how to do it. But it's gonna be so helpful, especially if you have limited space because it really compacts the clothing 
and that way you'll have an easy way to view them and also pull them out and quickly pop them into a poly mailer whenever they're ready to be shipped and sold. So we definitely recommend checking out that technique because it's been not only a huge lifesaver for so many of us just having to deal with our own personal <laughs> spaces, but specifically as a reseller and as a apparel seller, trying to stay organized, trying to stay neat, and trying to maximize the space that you do have. Yeah, definitely. Those are great tips, Colleen. And uh, sellers, if you have any tips on how you organize your Jeff piles or how you sell clothes or home goods, whether it be on Poshmark or any other marketplace, um, let us know in the comments so you can share your sage wisdom with other resellers in the mm -hmm. community. Speaking of the community, I, um, getting back into selling clothes, if you are you know, nervous about getting started, if you don't feel like you're a fashion expert and this is something, this is a totally new area for you to get started in, really again, now is the time to start doing it. Not only is there such a surplus and great inventory out there being donated, but the community itself is gonna be very, very supportive. There's so, it's so easy now to sell clothing with ThreadUp, Tracy, Poshmark. It's snap a picture on your phone, list it, share it, and get sales. Um, additionally, the communities for these apparel selling apps are just overwhelmingly welcoming. It's amazing. Um, everyone's there to help you, to teach you, to not, you know, give some advice that might actually hurt your business. Everyone wants to help each other and to really just embrace you with open arms. So go ahead and check out those communities, check out those apps, and just jump in. You know, experience is the great, you know, it's the greatest teacher. Uh, you're never going to learn everything from just a YouTube video. You really just got to get in and, you know, start doing it. People are there to help, but starting is the first step. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, even Colleen and I have sold on Poshmark. Yeah. Um, and and it's, trust been, me. it's been really fun. Yeah. So, yeah, that's awesome. Cleaning your space, making some money, there's really nothing, you know, doesn't hurt anything like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and I know we also just recently made a video actually on how to sell on different alternative marketplaces, Poshmark being one of them. Mm -hmm. um, so we're actually going to leave the link to that video in the comments here so you guys can check that out after. Mm -hmm. And we great. have a bunch of other content too about how to sell specific types of inventory. So we have ones on that we will be listing on tips for selling on Poshmark and other clothing apparel reselling apps, but also for how to maximize your clothing sales on eBay. So keep an eye out for content like that. We're always ready to share the information that we have so that you guys can sell better. Yeah. Okay. So now on to what I'm sure is going to be our favorite part yep. of this entire series, mm -hmm. um, which is answering your questions um, from the community. So earlier this week and then also last week, Colleen and I put out a call for questions on social media through our Twitter, Instagram. Facebook, LinkedIn. Fun fact, if you're not already following them, you should go do that right now. Yeah. We'd really appreciate it. Um, so we solicited for questions. We got a bunch of really great ones. So we're going to pick a few that we really liked and answer them here. But if you weren't able to ask us a question earlier, don't worry. Again, just post it in the comments, either on LinkedIn, um, not LinkedIn, Instagram or Facebook, um, and we will pick a few at the end to answer live. Okay, so Colleen, let's get into the first question. So this one is from Nathan okay. on Facebook. And his question is, will bulk deliver to ground level storage units? Nathan, great question, not a super easy answer. So the answer is basically yes and no. Um, you're really gonna wanna have to contact your specific storage unit and ask them if that is something that they are willing to accept. Most storage units, yes, will especially accept freight shipments because a lot of people are bringing in big old trucks to unload their things into their storage unit. But with freight shipments, that's if you're ordering a bulk pallet you will have to be there to sign for the order. And again, we highly recommend that you check with your storage unit to make sure that they are capable of receiving an order that large on a truck that large to that specific unit. With ground shipments, where we would ship all of our cases, which are the smaller boxes, um, we don't recommend directly shipping to a storage unit since no one will have to be required to sign there and you don't wanna leave that responsibility up to a worker that may be you don't have a rapport with or you know have a trusting relationship with so for ground shipments again most likely we recommend shipping it to your home or your business if it does need to be a storage unit check with your storage unit facility and see if they're willing to accept packages on your behalf awesome okay that was a great question so this next one is from rudy he came in on instagram and he asks can resellers list items on bulk uh, Rudy, great question. We also hear that one a lot. Uh, the answer is no. So right now, Bulk is not an open marketplace to list your items. The way that we receive our inventory is we partner directly with major retailers, so like Target, 
Lowe's, Bed Bath & Beyond, um, you know, they come to us, we take their inventory, we sort it, we categorize it, we condition it, um, we manifest it, and then we list it. Right now we are not an open marketplace, so you cannot sell your items. Yep. Awesome. So this next one is from Wanda, and she's asking of a couple parts. So first, do we have any tips that could make inventory, taking inventory of new items and then also listing them on multiple platforms easier? And also, what are the barcode stickers that we put on all of our items? Okay. So for cross-listing, that is something that is a topic that's floating around all the time in the reselling community. People want to be able to easily cross-post all of their inventory on their platforms. Unfortunately, there's not anything that's crazy, you know, tech light that's going to be able to assist you with all of those different types of cross platform listings. Uh, one piece of advice I do have for that though is to be very cautious when you are cross-listing. Oftentimes a lot of people might forget to delist an item that they have listed across four or five different marketplaces that they're selling on, resulting in multiple sales and unable to be fill filling those. Something that you absolutely do, do not want is a low seller score rating on whichever platform you're on because that could then get you kicked off or restricted from selling in the future. Um, so if you are cross-listing, I would recommend keeping it to down to you know two to three max maybe and being very very diligent about you know unlisting an item if something sale sells and you know keeping that inventory you know being very mindful of your inventory and what you have currently in stock um, so yeah you don't want to you know you don't want to create bad customers experiences you don't want to be a, a poor seller on any of the platforms you don't want to get kicked off so Unfortunately, not not the best. You know, there's not a super, something super easy. You just gotta be very diligent. Yeah, yeah. Um, as for the barcodes, I think what you are asking, Wanda, is um, so bulk. We do put stickers on every single bulk product that you receive. So when you receive a pallet or a case, you will notice that every single item has a unique sticker. It says OptiTurn LP on it, and it has a number. It starts with LP, and then you know some following digits. Um, you'll also notice that a column on every bulk manifest that lists those same LPs. So those are individual unit product identifiers. LP stands for license plate. Um, they are not the same as UPC. They are an internal use only so that we can specifically identify a certain product that may be, have an issue or just so again, so we can identify it. A tip for you guys to using this is um, if you were, let's say you needed to file a claim on any order um, you receive a bulk pallet, you're going through it, you were supposed to receive a GoPro camera on this particular lot, and you see that the LP matching it was actually stuck to a, an Apple Watch or something, just anything else really. That way you'd be able to specifically identify that product, let us know so that we can help you file a claim and get you the refund that you deserve. It, all, it doesn't happen often, but it does happen, um, and that way we can specifically identify those products for you and get you know your issue treated right away. Awesome. Okay, and so our last question that we got from social earlier this week is from Zona Gal on Instagram, and she's asking another couple part question. Um, so I'll ask it in parts. Okay, so first, Colleen, why do some lots contain unknown items? So some lots, okay, so we'll first start off going back. We do list manifests for every single bulk lot. One of our things that we pride ourselves in is our transparency. Um, that's why we do provide free manifests available to view and download without even having to create an account on bulk so that you guys can be able to do that product research, see what's in a lot, and make sure it's going to be a profitable investment before your, for your business before you buy just to take into consideration. If you do see lots of listed with unknown items, that's because we did not receive that product information from our clients. The way that, again, mentioned earlier, we partner with major retailers um, to process their overstock, their returned and their refurbished goods so that we can then categorize them, condition them and sell them to you all. Um, if they do not provide us with that specific product information, then we cannot pass that information on to you. We will let you know that they are unknown items, but if we don't have the information, we can't share it. Um, because that information is also totally free for you guys to view, if you don't feel comfortable purchasing an unknown or mystery lot, then you know, absolutely move on. You know, we would never want you guys to make a decision in purchasing that would harm your business. So, you know, that's you know, just if you don't feel comfortable investing in something like that, then move on to the next lock to research. But that's where basically unknowns come from. We don't have that information, so we can't share it. If we did, it'd be there. Yeah, yeah. Totally. No, awesome insight. So then part two of that is um, can we put up 
more item photos for the items included in these lots? I think that so fo product photos is probably our most asked question throughout the years. Um, we totally understand all our customers, they want to see pictures of all the individual units that we're receiving. Um, not so unfortunate, but you know we are working and partnering with these huge major retailers. They are sending us thousands and thousands of items a day for us to process in our warehouse. That means every time an item gets touched, inspected, and looked at, that has a cost to it, as you may know. Your time is money, a touch is money. So if we were to stop and take individual photos of every single product unit, that would only increase its prices on bulk, and we don't want to do that for you. We, a solution around this that we have recently come out with is, is that we have stock photos listed for all the items listed in the manifest so that you can go and you can see what that product is. Again, unfortunately, we just don't have the warehouse capacity to be able to take photos of every single unit without having to affect the prices that are currently listed on bulk.com. And I don't think anyone wants higher prices, so. Right, totally. And then um, last part of that question is can holiday items be put in separate lots and not mixed in with like the rest of yeah. the other kinds of stuff? So we, uh, you know, that's another thing that we hear a lot. It's sub definitely something we're looking into and working on based on sorting and creating more, you know, specific types of sorts like that. At the moment, we uh, don't have the actual technology to be able to distinguish what a holiday item is. In the, re you know, in a retail world, it will just say decorative or home and good, you know, home goods. So we don't, you know, as a way of product is actually described, it's not described as holiday. So we need to, we're still working on developing a technology that might be able to identify that more clearly so that we can sort it more clearly. Right now we're working on it, but we don't have that feature available. Awesome. Great insight, Colleen. Thank you for answering those questions. Okay, mm -hmm. so now we're gonna take a look um, at our Instagram and Facebook feeds and see if there are any great questions that have been posted up there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Colleen's gonna take a look at Instagram really fast. Go for Instagram. And there's still time to post comments and questions. Um, and the great thing is if you post a comment that we're not able to answer um, or you're out of time, no worries, we can answer it afterwards. And also we do need suggestions for next month's video. Um, so feel free to include those as well. Uh, Um, but our. Oh, do you want to just look over in here? Okay, so we're going to take a look at Facebook. Hey, Rob. Rob says hi. He runs the Product Sourcing 101 Facebook group. If you guys are not a part of that, join it now. It is so, so helpful. Um, not only, I mean, there's plenty of reviews for bulk if you're still thinking about sourcing with us so that you can get true, honest opinions from resellers, but also it's just one of those. It's a great reselling community for, to answer any questions that you might have from just getting started to where you want to source to specific inventory you want to source. Really anything and anything you can ask about reselling could be answered here. So if you haven't joined that group, I definitely recommend going and uh, joining that now. That's Product Sourcing 101. Um, and then let's see. So Nathan, um, Nathan asks, why do liquidation companies not allow buyers to select the types of items they want more specifically, like just shoes, no apparel? So when, that is, that's a great question. Um, again, it's also something that we are currently working on and streamlining our condition, our category um, when we're building these lots. Uh, you, uh, I, there are definitely a lot of uh, online sources and inventory sources out there that will provide you with just shoes and no apparel. Um, but it's really just about all how it's built and how the technology determines which things should go in which lots. The cool thing about bulk though is that when you are on the page for viewing a lot, you'll be able to see the exact percentage of um, how many, of what type of category the items are in there. So it'll say, it'll say something like, you know, 90% men's shoes and then it might say like 10 percent apparel um that's awesome yeah. insight colleen um we did just have a technical difficulty on the facebook live so i think we're going to cut it a little bit short but if you did have questions we'll be sure to answer them um after this 
Um, so again, thank you guys so much for joining. Um, and again, if you have suggestions for next month's video, please comment them. We would love to hear them. Um, and make sure you like and share this video. Yeah, comment us, send us a message. We're always available. We love all your questions. We want to hear more and we want to answer any questions you guys are going to have in the future. So for now, we'll catch you on the next one and keep up the hustle, y'all. Great. Thanks, guys. Bye.